facial appearance and fidelity of models of the Inventor 2011 has been drastically improved. We now have realistic rendering that we can use directly within the modeling environment. This incorporates a consolidated high quality visual materials library that is shared across other Autodesk applications uh, such as Revit Platform, Autodesk Showcase and Autodesk 3D Studio Max. Some of the other improvements are in advanced image based lighting and also a, a huge expanded materials library that we can make use of. First thing we'll look at is some visual styles. So we'll start by actually putting the model into perspective mode, like so. And you can see here now we have a number of visual styles that we can make use of within Inventor. So currently I'm just in a standard shaded view at the moment. But for example, I might want to have a look at some wireframe modeling with some hidden edges available. Other styles, maybe monochrome. Or maybe for technical illustration purposes, we could put it into just a, a line type drawing. So some great looking visual styles there. So to improve it even further, we can put on some real time shadows. Now the shadows, we can actually just say, right, we'll only want uh, ground plane shadows. And now if you have a look at the, uh, the ground here, you can see we have some very nice soft looking shadows on the ground. Or we could now say, well actually I want object based shadows as well. Or maybe even ambient shadows. Okay, so you can see that the uh, visual fidelity of this is, is pretty high. Now, Inventor is now making use of DX10 and DX11 capable graphics cards. So you can imagine the performance has greatly improved and also we're having much more competing real-time graphics on the screen. But how could we improve this further? Well, let's now start to take a look at uh, some reflections that we might want to use. Okay, so you can now see that the model is being reflected on the ground plane below. If indeed we wanted to show a basic ground plane, again we could make use of that and switch that on. So it's just a standard uh, ground plane within Inventor. The lighting at the moment is just pure standard lighting just driven by two lights that come with, as default within Inventor. One of the real nice features in 2011 is the ability to use image based lighting and be able to have finite control over that. So, if we have a look at this, here are my lighting controls here. What we can actually do is we can actually switch it into uh, image-based lighting. So, as an example here, I'm going to put it into a warehouse environment. Now, what's happening at the moment is Inventor is actually using the lighting from an image that we currently can't see. But already you can see that there's a drastic improvement now to the actual lighting environment. If we want to, we can actually start to configure the lighting. So for example, I could go into settings here. What I might want to do within the settings dialog box is actually ask Inventor to show me the uh, image. So there's the image that it's using at the moment. And now you can see the model is framed within this nice 3D image. Now, the actual uh, size and feed of the image can be changed. So if we go back to the uh, settings here. For example, I may wish to uh, scale the model compared to the uh, image, like so. Or I might want to actually change the orientation of the image as well, as you can see here. And again, you'll see that the lighting is actually responding in real time to these changes that I make. So the other thing that's quite nice is if you have a look at the uh, the shadows on the floor at the moment, they are quite uh, hard in appearance. So what we're able to do is actually start to change the, um, the, the shadow appearance in real time. So first thing we might want to do is soften up those shadows. And you can see as I slide this bar, if you uh, have a look underneath the accumulator on the uh, ground plane there, you can actually see these shadows becoming smoother in real time as I drag this simple slider bar. And the same thing with the ambient shadows, we can make them darker or lighter. And again, it's just so easy to get this image looking just how we want it to look. Now, at the moment, we are still just using the Inventor shading environment. What we can do is make use of this expanded materials library. Now, as we've just said, 
Inventor now shares its high quality visual materials library with products such as Showcase and 3D Studio Max. So let's now switch on realistic mode. Okay, now you can see a big difference to the way these materials are appearing on the screen. Now if we, if we start to zoom right away into the model, you can actually see the quality of these materials. Okay, so we've got this uh, brushed stainless steel effect on the cylinders, galvanized effect on the main casing here. If we come around and have a look at the, uh, the motor, you can see the, the bump map that's being used on this particular material. So how are these actual materials configured and set up? And again, as you'd expect with Inventor, it's very easy to do. You can just go into the settings area here. Go and have a look at our colour styles. And for each standard flat shaded material that we have within Inventor, we also have a high quality counterpart. And this will be shown in the realistic mode. So as an example here, you can see I've selected precast concrete. And in the basic material here, you can see we're showing concrete. We can set a texture up and maybe a bump map. Or we can actually uh, specify a realistic material. So if we go into the settings here and we now have a look at this uh, um, advanced library, we can see that this greatly expands the possibilities of using uh, realistic materials from within Inventor, especially when we want to relate uh, Inventor with a construction environment, looking at things like concrete, brick, materials, glazing, and so, on, so forth. 